to another Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fozy, and in this uh, video, I'm going to try to explain how to create a 2D rig uh, using uh, Unity, the latest Unity 2019, and uh, there are a lot of changes uh, since Unity acquired the Anima 2D plugins, and uh, but now the setup, it's very easy, it's much easier than before, so let's take a look. Uh, first, uh, I've created a new uh, project here, and here uh, I've import a character, and this is basically a character with uh, separate body parts. And why did I do this tutorial? Because uh, most of the tutorial I found on internet uh, are mostly using the uh, Photoshop files, uh, namely the PSB files. And for those who doesn't have access to Photoshop, uh, that could be a problem. Okay, so now uh, the first thing we we need to do first, uh, we need to import the assets, and I've already put the character assets here, and there is a lot of uh, art assets on the internet that you can search for and try to use that. And the next thing that we need to import is we need to go to the window, and then under the window menu we have this package manager, and then let's just enable the show preview packages, and currently it's loading packages. Once it's finished. We can just filter out and type 2D and it should be here once it's finished loading. Okay, so now uh, the preview packages uh, has been loaded and the package that we need to import is the 2D animation. So let's just select the 2D animation and then install, press the install here in the bottom right. And once it's finished install, we need to also install the 2D IK for creating the IK control. And IK stands for inverse kinematic. Okay, now it's importing all of the scripts. Once it's finished, let's just import the 2D IK. Okay, now our 2D animation component is, uh, has finished installed. So let's just go to the 2D IK and then press install. Okay, now we have installed two package that we need to create a 2D rig. Let's just close the package manager. And then under this uh, uh, the sprites assets here, go to the inspector and then press the sprite editor, open it. And here under the sprite editor, now we will have access to the skinning editor. So let's just press the skinning editor. And now we need to create the bones on each of the body parts. So the first bones that uh, I will create is the pelvis because I want uh, the pelvis bone to be the root bones for all other bones that we will create for this character. So this will be the uh, bones that have the most upper links compared to the other bones. So let's just press create bones and then I'm going to create a bone here. Dub oh, you need to double click on the sprite first, on the opaque area of the sprites. And then once we have this orange outline, we can create the bones. And it will automatically create the other bones. but for this, I'm going to press right click to cancel it, and then I want to create a new bones on the body here. So let's just create two new two bones, and this will be the spine. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, we want to reparent the bone, so let's just set this bone here to the parent uh, to the child of the first bone. As you can see here, if we press the reparent bones, you will see we have this options and we can drag the bones and now if we zoom in you'll see that we have this uh, slightly transparent link that indicates the yellow uh, bone here are parented to this red bone here. So let's just create another bone and then uh, I'm going to click on the uh, the root of the green bone here, the bottom part of the green bone and then now we can create a new bone that are parented to this green bone but uh, doesn't stuck in the edge or in the pointy parts of this green bone here. So let's just create the hand bones, and this would be the upper arm, and this would be the forearm, and this would be the hand. That's it. And for the, this would be the right arm, and for the left arm, let's just set this the same way as our right arm. And now that we need to create the neck, and the neck should be the child of this bone, also the spine bone, so let's just create here. And then now the head bone should be also the child of this neck bone. So we want to change the parent. So just press the base of the blue bones here, the, the neck bones, and it will change parent. And then we can create the head bones like this. And then I'm going to right click twice to disable the bone creation. And now we need to create the leg bone. So 
the bones, uh, the leg bones needs to be the child of this pelvis. So let's just select the pelvis again. And then here, as you can see, we are parenting the leg bones to the pelvis. So let's just create three new bones for each of the leg, like so. And for the, this should be the right legs. Okay, so now that we have created all of this bone here, let's just rename the bone so it's easier for us to manage. And just select edit joints and then when we select the bones here as you can see we can change the name. So I'm going to call this head and then this should be the neck. And I'm going to fast forward the video. Okay, so now we uh, already rename all of the bones here, as you can see. And for the arms, I just add a uh, coat here uh, corresponding to the right, sorry, to the right arm or to the left arm. And once we already set the bones here, we need to we need to create the ge geometry first. So, and uh, you can set the outline detail, and this is uh, it will create how many subdivision or how many points corner points for each of our sprite here. And this is the alpha tol tolerance, and it will create holes if there are any. And subdivide will make sure that inside our mesh on each of the body parts will have a quite high resolution. Hence, it will create a, def uh, a better deformations. And for this settings, it seems to work the best. But if you have performance issues or if you have too many characters, you can always lower the values. And once uh, we set this. Uh, the amount here we can just generate selected and we can automatically uh, set the initial weights to each of the points uh, to correspond to the near the nearest bones so I just press generate for selected once it generates you can see that our heads gets influenced most by this head bones and the neck bones and so forth and as you can see the area that gets influenced with the bones will have the same color as the bones. so this seems works very good so far so let's just press apply and now that we already set the sprite we can just drag the sprite to our scene here and you see that we have this but now we can separate these things into bones by adding the sprite skin component and it will automatically create two new components the sprite skin entity and the sprite uh, skin script so now uh, we can just press create bones and automatically create the bones and it will list our bones with the corresponding names here and now if we expand this we will have all of the child object the bones as the child object of our character so now we have this setup we can just start uh, positioning so let's just drag the neck here and move it to this position here and for the head I'm going to move this to in front of our neck here but as you can see we have an ordering issue so we are going to fix that later but now let's just set up our bones and if you want to you can always rotate it okay and then we can move it and then we can rotate it so it fits our character and then for the body we can just move it down so it covers our pelvis partially and move and since the pelvis is the most upper uh, bones in the hierarchy, it will influence all of the child bones here. And I'm going to move the thigh. And this should be the right legs. And this one would be the... I'm sorry. Oh, this should be the left. And this one would be the right legs. Yep. So now we have set up our character. Let's just save our scene. And then uh, here, under the character sprites uh, assets in the project uh, panel let's just go to the sprite editor again and then go to the skinning editor and if we select edit joints here double click it uh, you'll see our bones let's just select the head bones uh, sorry not the head bones the first one that we want to select is the thigh the left thigh and we want to we want to set this uh, part of the sprite to be behind our pelvis so as you can see the pelvis have depth of zero 
So now we need to set this to a smaller value than zero. So it will lies behind our pelvis. And the lower the number, it will get rendered uh, first, but the higher number of the depth, it, it will get rendered less. So let's just set the left thigh to negative one and also the left knee. And unfortunately, we cannot select multiple bones, so we have to set this one by one. And for the right thigh, I'm going to set this to one, so it will get rendered in front of our pelvis since our pelvis have the depth of zero and same goes with our hand but i want to set the left arm to be also behind our left leg so this will be negative two and also the forearm negative two and the same goes with our left hand this should be also negative two and our upper arm we want to set this to uh, in front of our body but also be in front of our left leg so this will be positive two and the same goes with the forearm this is, should be two also and the left uh, sorry the right the right hand also two and for the neck i want to set this to one and for the head i want to set this to also two and if we want to make sure that our hands is always stays in front also uh against our head so we can just select the right arm again and then set this to a bigger value than two for example three should do and yeah so now that we have set the order just press apply and if we close this sprite editor you'll see that in our scene we will have the right order so now that we have set up the bones let's just set up the ik so now let's create an ik and in order to create the ik let's just select our character on our scene here hierarchy and let's add a new component called ik manager 2d and here uh we need to add a new controller and in order to add a controller just press the plus button here and then uh, we can select a couple of ik types here but i'm going to choose the limb this will automatically create a new empty game object and we can just move the empty game object and uh, we can just reposition the empty game object to the limbs that we want to control here so for example uh, this will be the right leg so i'm going to rename this to right leg and once we rename the empty game object we can use a custom icon so it will shown in the scene view here and now in order to control the leg here just select the most lower part of our ik chain that we want to control for example this the right leg should control our uh, right foot here so drag the right foot as the vector and just set the target to none here and once we create the target it will automatically create the ik so now and once we create the target as you can see it automatically sets the target here and i believe the target is child of our uh right leg here and this is the target and unity will handle this uh, handle that automatically so now we can control this and if the flip or the orientations of our ik is somehow wrong you can just always enable the flip options to see if it's wrong and if it's flipped then we need to disable it so Okay, and I'm going to create the rest of the IK. And now as you can see, as I create the right arm, the IK is messed up. So I'm going to enable the flip option. So it will flip back to the correct uh, direction of our IK. And now for the left hand, let's just rename this choose a custom icon so we can see it on our viewport and here just drag the left hand and for this ik limb to work we need to make sure that the limb have uh, have three chains so for example uh, for my arm it has the upper arm forearm and the uh, the hand so uh, it will not work if we only have two bones or more than three it has to be three bones so make sure of that and here I've set the left hand as the target effector. So let's just create target and it will automatically create a new bone and the direction is flip. So I'm going to enable the flip options. And now you see that I can move the arm. And if you want to rotate, you can always rotate the IK controller. There you go. So if we rotate it, our arm will rotate. Okay, so once we've created the IK, we can just create the animation the usual way by selecting the parent object or the character object and just press create and let's just call this waving 
and once we create the animation we can always uh, open our hierarchy here or the character hierarchy just go to a certain frame and then select the arm for example the right arm uh, the left arm and then move it here to this position here and then rotate it so it will automatically create a keyframe for it there you go so now we have this animation and we can just move the hand a bit to create a waving motion like so I'm not the the best the, the greatest character animator as you can see here but uh, I hope you get the idea on how to rig this and to create the animation using this and once you create the animation you can use this character and the animation uh, and the, uh, you can arrange the animator because once you create the character you'll see that uh, just like the usual uh, 2d object or the sprite object or 3d 3d character it will our animator will consist all of the clips that we have and then we can set the transition and then we can trigger those animation by our script so yeah that is basically how to create a character and as you can see uh, uh, the the body is messed up so I need to change the order here let's just go quick fix this under the skinning editor in the sprite editor I'm going to select edit joints double click on our sprite and then set this to 1 but if I set this to 1 then I need to move our neck here to 2 and not 12 but 2 sorry this should be 12 uh, sorry this should be 2 and for the head bones I'm going to increase the depth to 3 and for the right hand I'm going to set this to 4 okay press apply and this will fix the issue here just move our yeah we still have issues with the left legs but yeah we can always increase the depth and yeah there you go on how to create a 2d ik rig using the latest unity and basically the process is quite simple compared to previous way of doing it so yeah i hope you find this tutorial helpful and if you like the video please subscribe and as i'll see you in the next video